Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Firelands of Bust! Woof indeed! <laughs> Woof indeed! Welcome back to Firelands of Bust, we are here on the island of Heidi Hole of the last episode-ness. Woof indeed! It's been a little bit, had a little bit of a holiday break, and I'm assuming many of you are probably still on your holiday breaks. But we're back here for episode 432 of Far Lands or Bust, and in doing so, we will continue west to those far lands here in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3. It is Monday, 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 December 29th, 2014. I hope everybody had a good holiday, like I said. Christmas, Christmas was last week. Hopefully, whatever, whatever you, whatever you do, do. Ooh, that's a, that is a happening place. It's got creepers, cows, pigs. It's, it's the, it's the new hotspot here in Minecraft. That island. That island. Um, but, uh, yeah, what, whatever you did or didn't do, you had a, had a good time. Perhaps it was, it was just another day. In which case, marry just another day. But we are continuing on here. And uh, I'm glad to be back, and I'm very glad to see at, at the last episode we had uh, we were at $17,000 even for Far Lands or Bust, not for Far Lands or Bust, for Child's Play Charity, our Child's Play Charity fundraiser. And uh, just over the weekend, now we're up to $17,591, so $591.91, and can't forget those 91 cents, have been raised for Child's Play Charity this season, season 5. All the way up to 35% to our $50,000 goal at farlandsorbust.com is where you can donate. Farlandsorbust.com. If you're feeling charitable elsewhere, Zeldathon, our good friend MC Gamer, and his Fun for Freedom crew are doing Zeldathon, I believe, right now. I think he said it's live and they're up and running. Uh, I have not because I have been away. With the holiday and stuff, I have not been able to keep tabs on, on what they're up to, but uh, that's another another option for you. If you are feeling especially charitable and, and wish to find another gaming, gamer, fundraiser, charity thing I'm a bob to donate to, there's that. It's, it is the, the season for giving. The season for giving a hoot. <laughs> uh, moo to you too, sir. Moo to you too. But yeah, we're continuing on. I hope everybody had, like I said, a good uh, holiday, good weekend. It's still technically the holidays, I guess. We got New Year's. New Year's Eve is a Wednesday, which means I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to be able to do a Wednesday for our Lands of Bust video. So do not be surprised if there is not, but hopefully, definitely, probably Friday we'll, we'll, we'll get back on it. And I'm really kind of looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. A, a normal general schedule, if you will, a constant for a week uh, thing. You know, instead of just, you know, missing days and this, that, and the other, and back and forth. But it's still, I guess, good. Good, you know, I, I don't feel like I've gotten back on track since the move, even. So it's been over a month for me. So we'll get back on track soon. And uh, I hope I hope you, you stay with me. You, you keep on keeping on with the old Kurt J. Mac channel here. Uh, I would appreciate that. All your all your views and comments and likes and and whatevers and shares are are, are much appreciated. I'm desperate. No, <laughs> ah, uh, I am just a little bit though. Uh, so yeah, we're continuing here. Uh, I have a I have a, a follow up. I gave you guys homework on the last episode. I said, where does the term pans out come from? I hope this pans out for you. And I was I didn't really put the dots together as to the etymology of that. I thought maybe, is it like a, f I was thinking frying pan, I was stuck on a frying pan for some reason, and then I was thinking about cinematography, like you pan out the shot. I, I didn't even consider, I didn't even consider, but many of you were, were very quick to uh, inform me that it probably, most definitely, comes from gold panning. Gold panning in the old Wild West, where you'd go panning for gold, you have... A pan. It looks like a frying pan. Similar shallow pan. You put it in the water with the stuff and then you pan it out and hopefully it pans out for you and you find gold, I suppose, is the 
the correct terminology where that came from. So now we're learning things. Learning things like uh, English class here in Far Lands or Bust. Next, we'll be reading The Great Gatsby. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, indeed. Indeed. So, yeah, that. that I, I didn't even think about that. The first comment I saw that mentioned that, I'm like, oh, of course. You nincompoop. Of course that makes sense. What else could it possibly be? Pans out. Frying pan. Crazy. Crazy dude. Whew, I'm feeling a little bit... Uh, I went I, I went out for coffee this morning and they were out of medium cups. I don't really just get a medium coffee and uh, they... they well, I'll just give you a large cup. We'll just put a medium amount. No, no, they filled up the large cup. So I had too much coffee. So I'm totally a little bit like... <laughs> too much coffee, guys. It's too much coffee. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, coffee shop coffee, like the stuff they brew, is a little bit stronger, too. They, they probably are more... Uh, Adapt. Adapt? Is that the word I'm looking for? No, they're a little bit more uh, accommodating to the to the business person who needs... Careful Wolfie, careful Wolfie, careful Wolfie. Oh good, you just spawned down here. Who needs a, a good dose of caffeine? More more so than, than what I make here at home on my own. So, hey there, hi there, ho there, hey there. <laughs> let's go to the Far Lands. Come on guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. What are we waiting for? Let's go to the Far Lands. Come on Wolfie, Wolfie, be careful Wolfie, be careful Wolfie. <laughs> oh man. Too much. It's too much, man. You're gonna cause some, some, some brain damage. Some, your arteries are gonna spaz out. Spaz out, man. But uh, yeah, we're continuing on. But yeah, like I said, I had uh, the holidays. I had family visit. I had my sister. My sister visited the new place, and it's kind of weird. Not weird having, but you know, it, normally when you go visit somebody out of town, they like are aware of where they've been living for a while and they know all the spots and oh these are the good restaurants and I'm kind of just like I just moved here I don't know what to do <laughs> so let's explore and I don't think we've had we had a, a bad experience haven't found a bad restaurant or, a, or anything like that yet so it was good times good times were had indeed some some family time over the holidays so that that was good and uh, yeah, so now we're we're getting back to work here, getting back to work, doing the work, raising money for Child's Play charity, farlandsabus.com. Plug, 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 plug. How are you doing? Probably use one of these. Bloop. There you go. Ah, uh, pans out the gold panning. I haven't been keeping track. Being the holidays, I, don't, I haven't been keeping track of the news too much, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I know that SpaceX Falcon 9 launch is reshifted for early next month. The first couple weeks of January, I'll be keeping track, and I'll I'll keep you notified of when that launch date is, because that's the one they're going to try to reland, land the first stage on the platform. So that'll be fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I guess we can look at some questions here. Look at some questions. Starman, with his donation, asks, Are you a fan of amusement parks? And if so, what's your favorite flat ride or roller coaster? I don't know what a flat ride is. Is that a non-roller coaster ride? Um, not sure about the flat rides. Uh, but I used to go to amusement parks through middle school. But not much since then. There was north of Chicago, Six Flags, Great America, and the White Eagle, was it? Was like the old, uh, the big old wooden roller coaster, that was a cool one. But there was also one that I've heard actually recently, well actually probably within the last ten years, was taken down or replaced. It was a blue, it was right at the entrance, a blue roller coaster. It was the first upside down roller coaster I went on. I forgot what it was called. The the blue streak or the silver streak or something streak. Uh, streaky mirrors. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it was uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, it had some nice 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 loop de loops and corkscrews. But yeah, I remember going for like a in early middle school or maybe late elementary school for like a birthday party with some some friends, and I had not been on an upside down roller coaster before, and they were all like. 
yeah, upside down roller coasters. So I didn't want to seem uncool. So I was like, yeah, upside down roller coaster, sure. But I was freaking out. Freaking out. You get to the top of the first hill, you know, you're and you kind of hang there and you're like, I wish to exit the seat immediately. This was a terrible idea. I'm gonna have a bad day. But uh, once you get down that first hill, the, the adrenaline afterwards was rushing and you're like, well, this was, it was like the first thing, you know, it was right there at the entrance. So it was the first roller coaster all the, all the kids went on and I went along. So after we got through that, I'm like, I can do anything. And I think we pretty much did all of the roller coasters that day. And from then, I was pretty excited to be doing upside down roller coasters and whatever, but uh, not really much of an enthusiast, I suppose. There are people who must ride all the roller coasters, but eh, it, w it was a passing interest in my youth. Youth. Youths. Uh, <laughs> he's had too much coffee today. But uh, yeah, Starman, I appreciate the question and the donation to Child's Play Charity. Let's go to sleep and continue in the morning. <laughs> And vomit comet <laughs> roller coasters. E. There we go. Continuing on here. Graydon asks, "What are your thoughts on UHC season 19?" Spoiler alert, everybody! If you haven't watched UHC season 19, then you're about to be spoiled, basically. Uh, that yeah, that ha just happened. And honestly, I, as as probably not good as this sounds, I didn't watch the rest of it. Um, I, for those who aren't aware, got four episodes in before tragedy befell us, and uh, we once again lost another UHC. But that was it was fun. I I do wish. Uh, I suppose for those of you who weren't watching, play UHC, Mind Crack, Ultra Hardcore. In this one. We use this mumble plugin that uh, is kind of cool because it's very it's positional. Like say Wolfie is a player, I'd be able to hear him out of my left ear and then my right ear. And as I get further away, you can't hear a person anymore. So that's the only way you can communicate with anybody is by within the game being near them. Uh, and that works for both friends and foe. We split up into two teams, which after consideration, I'm not sure if I like the two team thing too much. I do like you know, smaller teams, it, it, it leads to a little bit more variability, I think. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, went through a couple episodes and I eventually found Beef. And, I, you know, that was one of the things I wish we had more time with Beef to really, you know, we were really, we found him underground and we never left underground for, for the couple episodes or episode and a half that we were alive. Uh, so yeah, it'd be cool to be on like Beef's UHC team like officially uh, at some point in the future. Uh, I also said before it'd be interesting to be with Good uh, on a UHC team. I feel like our personalities would play off of each other pretty well uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, and uh, But yeah, I do wish I had more time, but yeah, I didn't end up watching the rest of it. The one thing I don't like about the mumble plugin, I like the concept and the idea. The one thing I don't like is how when you're hunting like an enemy, you're pretty much silent. It leads to a lot of silence, which some people like that for the it creates tension for the video, but I I'm personally somebody who likes as as is indicated by my continuous jibber jabber right here in Far Lands of Us. I like to commentate when I'm silent playing video games, it doesn't feel... Careful of A! It doesn't feel right, and I feel like I would want to, like, be, you know, commentary guy. But with that plugin, it leads to a lot of silence and... Shh, 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 I hear somebody! I hear somebody! You know, stuff like that, which uh, is is unfortunate. But on the flip side, that mumble plugin led to some pretty fun uh, instances, like when I heard Beef underground, but he couldn't really make out who I was, so I was just like, for 10 minutes, Hey Beef! It's me! Where are you at? Say a few syllables! Marco! Polo! And uh, trying to find him just via the voice, as opposed to just, you know, seeing somebody at a distance. So I'm not sure. I think a way that would resolve that would be if we did the mumble plug-in, but could only hear our teammates? So it would be kind of strategically relevant because you could only communicate with your teammates if you were close, but then you could still talk with each other even if you see 
the enemies. Of course, you couldn't hear them coming either, so there, it's kind of a trade-off there. So I think that would probably be a good way to use the Mumble plugin. That that would uh, still maintain a, a right amount of commentary, or not. Maybe some people like the, the being able to hear enemies or whatever. But uh, but yeah, that those were my thoughts. Uh, and I you know I do think that the the two teams thing was a little bit. It could get lopsided very quickly, but like I said, I really didn't watch too much of it. There were like technical issues. I didn't really watch the edge, the end of of this UHC. There were technical issues. We always run into technical issues. I just wish it was, and there's really nothing that can be anticipated or done about these sort of things, whether it be the lag or something happens in, in the Nether or or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, it's just it's the nature of the games we play. But, uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty decent one to be a part of. Like I said, I recorded that one literally the day after I returned. I recorded and uploaded that, uh... Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was Black Friday. The Black Friday Far Lands or Bust when I returned from my hiatus. And then the next day, on a Saturday, we recorded the UHC. So I was still very much not used to recording and of course you know that also impacts if i do co-op stuff i'm not too used to interacting with other people so that probably hindered it a little bit but it was all right had a good time got some got some good video out of it had that nice moment trying to find beef and uh, fun stuff so it was cool beans cool beans were had looking forward to the next one and whatever kind of, you know, I'm, I'm maybe kind of looking forward to and I think, I'm not sure, I haven't, like I said, been talking too much to people or been part of many of the discussions, but it'd be cool to just do like a normal UHC without any twist, without any sort of, you know, fancy, ooh, mumble plug-in, or ooh, two teams, or ooh, uh, kill the dragon, or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm not sure what the plan is for the next one, if there even is a plan, if it's been discussed yet, but it'd be kind of cool to just be like, okay, normal UHC, full stop, period, you know, we just kind of Kind of to kind of refresh ourselves or reset. It'd be really cool to go back to the original when we originally played UHC season thirteen. It was I think we were was it? I can't remember if was it Minecraft one point eight or was it one point seven? Because there wasn't hunger, was there? Maybe there was. Maybe it was 1.8 when one, they released 1.8. Minecraft 1.8 is when kind of the UHC thing started. But it'd be cool to go back to there. No enchanting, uh, no villages and, and uh, structures to plumage. It was just like straight up survival Minecraft, uh, old old school style. That would be interesting. But who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I really didn't. I really didn't watch the rest of UHC 19, so my my opinions are moot. They are moot. I am Groot and moot. Uh, a question here from Jens or Jens. Uh, either way, you don't enjoy whiskey anymore. Well, I didn't say I don't enjoy it. I just don't drink it. <laughs> it I'm sure it is still just as enjoyable. Uh, you don't enjoy whiskey anymore. I know that, but I still got to ask. I still got to ask. Got to ask you a question. What was your favorite, and did you enjoy the peated ones? Peat. Peated whiskey. Peat. <laughs> Weird word. Uh, I didn't so much enjoy the peated ones. I enjoyed the, the sherry ones. These were, were, were scotches that were matured or matured in sherry casks. Uh, I really liked... I, I can't say that I, I tasted enough to really have a, a wide swath of of input or, you know, to be able to say this is my favorite, but I the brand I kept going back to was Arbalur. Uh, they had a very good, it was very, you know, the sherry casks makes things a little bit sweeter, I suppose it, it tasted, as opposed to kind of the peaty, not sour, but just the smoky, that kind of smoky, grassy, peaty... Uh, kinds, but I, I like the Arbalor. There was the the fifteen year was kind of the good basic one. There was also one called the Abunda, which is a little bit stronger. It was the cask strength uh, one. Uh, was was Abunda? I think that was a little bit more expensive and harder to find. Uh, but I, I was a fan of Arbalor. There was uh, was it uh, what was the really peaty one that was like pow peaks in your face. 
Stinky Pete. Uh, uh, what was it? I can I can see the bottle in my head, uh, but I can't remember what it was called. Oh, should not have gone this way. Uh, it's like a black label. It wasn't black label. Johnny Walker isn't single malts. We're not we're not talking Johnny Walker. Uh, it was. Uh, does it start with an S? It might have been. May, I might be thinking of the town, Speyside, Speyside. However you say it, comes up with very peaty ones. But it was like, it was it it was a bit much. I mean, it was a very interesting flavor, the peat. Moo, I know. But uh, it was a bit. It was like too much. I couldn't enjoy it. I guess I kind of. I have a sweet tooth, so I go for the sweeter, more uh, sweeter, I suppose, flavors. No, I can't. I can't think of the name of that one now. But uh, whoop, oh god, I thought that was a. Thought that was a, a dangerous cliff, but it was not. So yeah, that uh, that's where that stood, with that. And I can admit, I know I said, you're all gonna be very disappointed in me. You know, my goal, my my idea was not to to have another drink until well, let's say till I'm 40 years old, another eight years. I've I've had a few drinks. Uh, mostly wine. Actually, only wine uh, I had on a, on a certain occasions worth celebrating with dinner. One glass of wine twice. So I apologize. I've let you all down. But yeah, I'm still kind of like, meh. I could do without it. So I, I haven't like purchased any bottles of anything. It was just out at restaurants with family or celebrating a new place, moving and things like that. I've had a glass of wine, so... Eh. <laughs> he shrugs his shoulders somewhat disappointingly, but let's go to sleep and we'll continue walking and answering questions in the morning. <laughs> and awakeness. I just noticed when you're sleeping, you're facing this way, but the, the compass still points as if you're facing this way. Probably the, the way you're facing when you go to sleep. Is probably what what happens there. I suppose we can do some science to find out, but I thought for a minute there I was walking the wrong way, but no, just the, the compass remains pointed in the way you're facing before you go to sleep. Minecraft science, everybody. Minecraft science. Yep, I know where we're going, Wolfie. Give me a give me a minute here. I have somebody Oh no! Go! Good gravy! Yeah Oh dang get just put a boat on you. All right, so leaves. Leaves are very dangerous to Wolfie, especially when getting out of water, so keep that in mind. And actually, it's right along the line here. Good timing, Wolfie. I got a... a poem? A limerick? A... a... a, a few verses of rhymy sentences here from Ryan with his donation for Christmas. Made a little poem. There once was a walker called Kurt whose dog kept on glitching in dirt. Careful, Wolfie, he said. That block wants you dead. With no bones left, it'll be your dessert. Is that the... What do the beat poetry do? They do like little snaps or something like that? I was actually just slapping my face there. <laughs> that's, that's how you applaud. Just smack yourself in the face. Whoopsh. Ah, uh, so thank you very much, Ryan, for the the very creative and you you are quite the wordsmith, the smith of words. Whoa, I'm surfing. Okay, we're all right. Yep. So that was that was very nice of you. Thank you. No no question there. Just just gave me the little. Uh, is that is that technically limerick? Is that the correct terminology? I didn't do that well with the technical side of English class, but uh, there we go. Let's see here. Got questions from patrons. This one anonymously asked, if you could change your first name so that it could no longer be Kurt, what would you change it to? And that's weird, because like you ask yourself that question, but you still don't feel like you could be somebody else. Or even, you know, if you have a friend or, or a brother or a sister and well, let's change their name to 
Steve when their name isn't Steve. It's like, well, they don't look like a Steve. They look like themselves. So uh, I can't say I know what I would change my name to be. I've told this a few times before, but actually my mom has told me that if she was the one to, to have chosen my name, I would have been a Luke. Luke. So I could have been a Luke. This could have been the Luke J. Mac channel. <laughs> Far lands are bust with Luke J. Mac. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue. See, that doesn't sound right. Even though if that had been my name all along, it would have been perfectly fine. But now that you know I'm Kurt, that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound right. Sounds wrong. Something, something's not right. It smells funny. Uh, see, I'm not sure. I think I did want to be, for whatever reason, when I was a little, I wanted to be a Mark. I don't know why. I didn't know anybody named Mark. I just liked the way it sounded. Mark J. Mac. All these four-letter words. Beg pardon? <laughs> uh, I wanted to be called... F no. No, that's not appropriate at all. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I can't answer that without being like, well, no, that really wouldn't work out. Woof. Just like... Wolfie is Wolfie, even though it was a name I just kind of said <laughs> at random. I said your name is Wolfie McWolfington? <laughs> and, and, and it stuck, so now that that is now known to be Wolfie. I'm going to avoid that area. I said I'm going to avoid that area, Wolfie, because there is lava over there, I'm presuming. Let's go on over here, but yes, thank you for that question, regardless. Regardless. Uh, let's see here. Alzeroth, patron in the patrons. He's asked questions in the uh, donations before, but as a patron, this question comes from him. If you had the resources, money, time, people, etc., to develop any one project that you could dream of, what project would you choose and why? Spaceship to travel to Mars? Your own space agency? A charity? High quality simulation racing game, etc., etc. Just some ideas. One project with the resources. Well, I mean, I suppose if I like, if I could just think up a project and that would be those resources would fulfill being able to succeed in that project, it probably would be something like what Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was, that was multifaceted. Um, you know, I'd probably want to be like, let's go to Mars. If you could say that, okay, you have 100% of the funding to be able to pay for such a thing. Which even, I don't think he and SpaceX has that. That's why he has to kind of turn to funding from, from NASA and, and other such things as those. But then again, he has his other projects like Tesla and uh, stuff like that that he comes up with. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. That would probably be it. If it was like a personal project, uh, I'd probably just choose something simple, like a project car. Like get a an old old car and and turn it into a hot rod or something like that. I always get you know you always for those of you who who peruse the automotive auction sites or sale sites, there's always. You know, there's always the complete cars that are, like, really expensive, and it's like, no, no, I would not be able to afford that. But then you see, oh, here's a, a project car, a, you know, 55 Chevy, it's got no engine, and it's pretty much just the the, the empty husk of a car, it, you know, that's been sitting in a barn, you know, $1,500, and it's yours. <laughs> well, that would be awesome to have, but then you have to find and put in the project, that's why it's called a project car, or even a parts car. To, to finish it off and actually make it a, a, a running thing, that would be cool as like a personal, you know, not creating a space agency to take humans to Mars thing. Uh, as a personal project, that would be pretty cool, I think. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that, that could go either way. That's a, that's a, that, that could be a, a big or small project kind of answer to that. Uh, well, let's just keep going on land. I was considering boating around, but it I'm too lazy. Too lazy for that. Ah, uh, let's see here. If... Let's see. If you could create one epic meal 
What would it consist of, and who would be your guests? If any, I would be by myself. It's all mine. Uh, Kathy, patron, asks... Hmm... That's another thing. People always ask me, oh, what's your favorite meal to eat or cook? And I don't have favorites. I had, like I said, I had some really good food when family was here. I had a good, uh... What did I have? <laughs> I don't remember. Um... I had good food, but it's not like, oh, this one thing I will make and it will be my favorite thing. So that is really rough. You know, like some people really, for whatever reason, like lobster or a certain cut of steak. Um, but I can't really think of what, like, my favorite meal would be. And and who to invite? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not a big, huge fan of the big, huge meals. The big, you know, tables. I really... This was a, a little bit of a pet peeve of mine when it was either uh, like either at, at going out at, at school or, or at, with work or even like say with the the astronomy club where we would go out to a bar or restaurant afterwards and whoa 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 oh I'm a shot Wolfie have a seat <laughs> good lord <laughs> that was close sorry just doing target practice uh, you'd, you'd go out to eat or or whatever and. There's a group of eight or ten or twelve people and having to, like, rearrange. That always made me really nervous. It's probably some sort of internal thing, but uh, having to, like, rearrange a restaurant's tables so that we can all sit together and sit at the same long table, even though people at one end would never be able to have a conversation with the people at the other table. But here's, like, four tables we had to, like, stack together and steal chairs from other tables to be able to sit all at the same table. That always made me... Uh, I always felt... You know, like we were making the waiters angry. Probably were too, at at, uh, at a certain degree. But uh, and even to the extent that then yes, even if it was like at a home or whatever, the long big family dinners and things like that always uh, it seemed it seemed like too much. I couldn't concentrate on the food or even having a single conversation with one person. There'd be too much too much going on, too many distractions. Easily easily distracted. Ooh, that goes somewhere. Not fun. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if I'm that much into epic meals. Some people are really into cooking or trying out new things or doing this out of the other. I'm I'm not an epic meal person. So so you will not see me as a guest on Epic Meal Time, perhaps. Uh nor nor would I ever. Uh let's see here. Oh, we can go bleh. We can go right here. We can drown ourselves perhaps just a little bit. Just a little bit. And uh Sure. Wolfie, where are you going to be? Let's go right here, why not? Oh, gosh. Oh, careful, Wolfie! Oh, oh, he probably fell on the, the one sand block that I put down there. Good job. Well done. All right, let's put you over here. Ooh. I'll try. There we go. There we go. All right, now i got a proper, proper entrance to a hidey hole. And we're going to... That is the last hidey hole, right? Okay. I'm always concerned I'm going to end an episode too early. I'm going to make this full size for us. As Wolfie peeps around the corner. And I'm going to uh, say thank you, everybody, for uh, donating. My patrons. All the questions you asked to give me things to talk about. Such a nice sunset here with Wolfie before the bad guys start spawning. And remind you, you can keep going to farlandsbus.com to donate to Child's Play Charity before the end of the year. Get those donations in. Uh, we can... Oop, I don't want to make boats. I want to make beds. We can... Uh, let's try to... I don't know if we can get up to 18,000. That'd be pretty cool. Nice round number for the end of the year. I've got no Jason Statham initiative or anything related to it this time, but... Uh, you know, it's cool to give yourself a little, little goal to see what we can do. That'd be great, great stuff. Helping get toys, books, games to kids in hospitals around the world. Around the world. Uh, yeah. I think that's that. Whew, gotta get back in the groove of things. Gotta get this caffeine out of my system. <laughs> gotta, gotta go to the bathroom. All the coffee. It's going right through me. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching this episode 432 of Far Lands or Bust. Click that little like button. I don't say that very often, if at all. Uh, that always helps spread the word, get new people involved, new Farlanders. 
to the crew on the journey. My name is Kurt. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Hey there, hi there, ho there, hey there. <laughs>